Hey Canucks fans, I'm going to tell you why I'm not so worried that Pedersen and Hughes haven't signed their contracts yet. I'm Canuck Clay, I'm the founder of the GLCPC, the Good Looking Canucks Positivity Club. This is my Canucks take on one take. It's Clay's Canucks commentary for Saturday, August the 14th. If you're new, you know what to do. Hit the subscribe button for Canucks insight that's positive, timely, and trustworthy. Back to my familiar confines of my car. My lovely wife Gail is beside me today and not holding the camera. Say hi Gail. Hi. Yes, a beautiful hand there. And don't forget, for those of you in Victoria, today, Market Square, right outside, the inside of the Market Square, right outside of Argentum Jewelry School, I'm going to meet anyone who comes down. So 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. today, for an hour, I will be at Market Square. I'll be on the inside. Gil will be shopping, I'm sure, and spending some money. And uh, yeah, I'd just love to meet you. So if you're in the Victoria area, and if you have nothing to do, I'm not insulting you. I'm just saying if you have nothing better to do, come down to Market Square. And I'd love to meet you and chat Canucks with you from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. today, Saturday afternoon. Oi, right, Canucks fans. This is why I'm not worried that Pedersen and Hughes are not signed yet. And I know it's the biggest story surrounding the Vancouver Canucks right now. It's the one that everyone's talking about. It's the one that people are worried about, especially given um, the stature of these players. They are two most, you could argue, are two most important players, not only now, but going forward. And th there's so many layers to this, right? As soon as Jason Dickinson's arbitration hearing is done this Friday, whether they sign him prior to that hearing, which is my prediction, or it gets all the way to Friday, as soon as that's done, the only two players that Canucks are left to sign are Pedersen and Hughes because they signed Yolevi last week as well. So really, these are the only two guys left after Dickinson. So all the attention, as I'm sure most of the attention is on them right now, all the attention will be on them from after this Friday. A couple of things I want to talk about. Firstly, yes, there are star players, there are most important players, but Jim Benning has had a habit of, of extending, not extending it on purpose, but taking his time, so to speak, with these deals, with his important players. Think, Bo Horvat, who five years ago, four years ago, was our most important player. He didn't sign his contract extension until September 8th, 2017. So September 8th, just before, you know, a couple of weeks before training camp. So keep that in mind. Today is August the 14th. Bo wasn't signed until September 8th, and then he signed that really good deal, six years at $5.5 million. So Bo Horvat signed on September 8th. Then in 2019, before, as Pedersen was starting to emerge, you'd, you could argue Brock Besser was not, was the most, or one of our most important players. And he wasn't signed. He was signed even later than, than Bo. He was signed on September 16th, 2019. I remember that because we were at Pizza Hut for my my son Jacob's birthday is on September 16th and he only likes Pizza Hut or McDonald's for his birthday. So we were at Pizza Hut and I remember going out to my car or going out to the outside and recording a very quick vlog about Brock Besser signing. So Brock Besser, September 16th. Bo Horvat, September 8th. Notice a common theme there, September. Um, and I know we don't like it. It might feel like it's dragging on too long, but our two most important players, I would argue Demko's in there too, but uh, he didn't count for the purpose of this conversation. The two most important players prior to Pedersen and Hughes, i.e. Horvat and Besser, they didn't sign their extensions until September. September 8th for Horvat, September 16th for Besser. So that's the first reason why I'm not so concerned as of right now. Now, it's interesting that Horvat signed the long term, longer term, six years, whereas Besser signed the bridge three years and I know that we're that's kind of what we're talking about right now is we, we know the Canucks don't have enough money probably 15 to 16 million once Dickinson signed 15 to 16 million for both Pedersen and Hughes there's no way you're gonna get both of those guys long term on 15 to 16 million but there is a chance that you could get one of them long term under that amount and likely it would be actually I, I was gonna say likely it would be Pedersen but I, I'm not so sure actually so you could get one long term one short term or you get two bridges for the maximum flexibility now, speaking of those uh, contracts, I, I must admit, I've been making a mistake. All along, I've been saying that Pedersen and Hughes are four years away from unrestricted free agency. And that's typically what happens, right? A player does three years in his entry-level contract, and then uh, you, you need seven years before you hit UFA. So then, uh, obviously, three plus four would make seven. However, Quinn Hughes, even though he's his three years technically burned his entry-level contract, he's only played two years from a standpoint of... Uh, seasons that count towards contracts. So picture this. When he played those five games uh, in April of 2019, they counted in terms of his contract, i.e. burning the first year of his entry-level contract. So then he's played two seasons since, so that's why he's up for a new deal. Those are three years. 
but those five games did were not enough to count when it comes to free agent years. So even though he he's done his three years for purposes of his first contract, he's only done two years when it comes to getting him to unrestricted free agency. So technically, a bridge deal for Hughes could be two, three, or even four years because two plus four only makes six. So if you follow my logic here, Pedersen's bridge would be two or three. Long term would be five, six, seven, eight. The one you want to avoid is four years because that takes him right to unrestricted free agency. But with Quinn Hughes, there's one extra year. So with Quinn Hughes, you could do bridge two, three, even four. And then five is the magic number you want to avoid because five plus is two takes him to unrestricted free agency at seven. And then, of course, you could go six, seven, eight as well. So just a couple of thoughts there. Uh, and, and I've been saying the wrong thing for the past few months. I've been saying that you don't want to do four-year deals for Pedersen or Hughes. Technically, Hughes could do a four-year deal if you follow that. Lastly, the agency that represents both Hughes and Pedersen they don't seem to be worried. And why would they? Uh, they they want to, dr- not necessarily draw it out, but they want to get, obviously, the, the maximize the deal for their clients. So they are not worried either. Whether it's Pat Brisson, who represents Quinn Hughes, or J.P. Berry, who represents Elias Pedersen, um, these guys aren't worried. They know that this is kind of part of the deal. And um, they, they know the Canucks negotiating history, i.e. late contracts for Horvat and Besser. They know, certainly know, how important they are to the Vancouver Canucks. So they in essence, wouldn't be in any rush for these players to sign as well. So, yes, it's, I wouldn't even say it's a black cloud, but it is a cloud looming over the team from a standpoint of it's it's going to loom over the team until they get done. But at the same time, because of the late history of the contract negotiating history of Jim Benning with the star players, I, on this day, Saturday, August the 14th, in beautiful Victoria, I am not worried right now that the Canucks, uh, that the deals aren't done yet. But talk to me at September 14th, and I might have a different story. Once again, people in Victoria, hope to see you tonight, or today, I should say, 4 p.m. to 5 p.m., Market Square, downtown Victoria, in front of the Argentum Jewelry uh, Jewelry School. I'll be there for an hour. I'd just love to meet you. Thank you for your support and chat Canucks with you. Okay, friends, leave a comment below. Tell me, are you worried that the contracts aren't done yet? And tell me why or why not. Shout out to my Hall of Fame members, Jens95, Sim Alexander, Justin Credible, Nuxton number 29, Lucas Gates, Chris Seifert, Adam Broomfield, Shea Family Channel, Shannon Hollingworth, and Andrew Chang. Thanks for your support as always, and thanks for the support of all members of all levels. You are listed in my video descriptions. If you want to become a member of the CCC crew, press the join button underneath this or any of my videos or on the memberships tab on my YouTube channel. So, comment below. Pedersen Hughes, no contracts yet. Are you worried? Why or why not? Subscribe if you like to, like this video if you like to, become a member of this channel if you like to, and leave a comment if you like to. Stay safe, stay healthy, take care of yourselves, and take care of each other. And if you're in Victoria, I hope to see you in a few hours. God bless. Go Canucks, go.